Hello, hello, hello. My name is Josie Carr, and welcome to the 1WP, uh, Planet 1WP show. I, I think I like 1WP today, but um, thank you for stopping by the Planet 1WP show today. Again, my name is Josie Carr, and as always, I try to figure out what I'm going to do. Sometimes I surprise myself in the process. <laughs> So today, um, I decided to do a little bit of working with audio in Ableton, maybe a little bit of warping, how to use envelopes, and how to pretty much take a simple loop and turn it into something else that we can use, right? Because sometimes we want to use samples, but we don't want to um, keep the original, but be inspired by the original. So we'll talk about ways that we can do that. So let's do it. Let's take a look at what we can do um, with audio. So the first thing we want to do is warp audio and warping audio in Ableton um, can be tricky for some people. Okay. And I understand why. I mean, for me to this day, it's still a little bit tricky, but we have some pretty cool tools that we can use that'll help us in the process. Right. So even, even before I, I warp anything into, um, Ableton, what I'm going to do is actually going to show you a program that I use. It's pretty cool program. And it gives you the tempo of stuff, so it makes life easier. You know, whatever makes life easier is what we want, right? So everyone has this idea, um, you have to do it this way, that way. No, you just do it the way that it works, you know? So the first thing I, I like to use, I like to use this program called Mix and Key. Okay, and you guys should be able to see it. Um, I'm going to be using my own song that's called Terra Ignata, which I released a couple of months ago, I think. Um, and you guys can check it out. Um, otherwise, they'll just knock me off the um, YouTube. But I like the song. So it tells me the tempo of the song right here, which is 126. And the key of it is G sharp minor. Okay, so the name of the program is Mix and Key. You take it, you drag a song in there. It analyzes the song and it kind of gets the tempo and it gets the key. And I think it's great. Okay, so I have an idea of what the tempo is and what the key of the song is. Let's say I did not know that, okay? I'm gonna show you guys a pretty cool trick. So the first thing we're gonna do right here, on the right-hand side of Ableton, if you guys take a look at it, it has the pencil that we can draw, it has a keyboard that we can use to type in keyboard as a musical keyboard, and next to that, it has this thing called key, which means that if we press that, we can assign any key of the typing keyboard to any of these things that are orange, okay? I'm gonna map it to the tap button. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to hit the T for tap. Okay. And then it puts a small T on it. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it off. You see? And when I hit the T, watch what happens. It changes the tempo for me, depending on how fast I tap that T. Okay. That's the first thing I'm going to do. The second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my preferences. Okay. By using the shortcut command comma, everything in life is easier when you use shortcuts. I'm a big fan of shortcuts. I ain't going to lie. Okay, we're going to go into warping, right? I don't like when Ableton warps my songs that are very long, like three or four. It just doesn't warp it right all the time. So I'm not a big fan of that, but I'll be honest with you. Ableton is by far the best that does analyze your tracks, hands down. You know, I use Pro Tools, I use Logic, I use Fruity Loops and all those. And I'll be honest with you, hands down, Ableton, Ableton has got it here. So what I do here with the long warp is I turn that off. I don't want it to automatically warp a song when it comes in there. In other words, it's going to take that song, it's going to analyze it, and then it's going to give me these markers where it thinks the tempo of the song should be. I'm cool. Uh, I pass on that. So I turn that off. For the small ones, I leave it on. The small ones is good. It gets it right. Okay. For about 98% of the time. Cool. So I'm all set. So now I'm going to find the song that I'm going to bring in. Okay, and I'm just going to drag it from my iTunes directly onto an audio track here. If you don't have an audio track, you could just drop it into the drop files. Okay, I'm going to just straight up just grab it. And you guys can see I'm bringing it here. And I'm going to put it on bar one. And I'm going to drop it. Okay, Ableton brought it in, right? So now if I want to see if it warped it or not, I'm going to double click on it. You see that? It's still bringing it in. Great. But look what it hasn't done. It hasn't turned on warping for me. It hasn't added any markers. And that's exactly how I want it. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, right, 
is I'm going to try to figure out what the tempo of it is. Remember, we're pretending we don't know the tempo. We're pretending we didn't use that cool program mixed in key. I'm not sponsored by them, by the way. But let's pretend we didn't use that and we didn't know the tempo. Okay. I'm going to bring the volume down just to make sure we're at a good level here. Okay. And I'm going to just play the track and start tapping my T. Remember, I programmed my T on my typing keyboard. So I'm going to play the track. And I'm just going to turn off the metronome. I don't want to hear it. About 125 so roughly I can see that that track is between 126 and 127 I mean 125 and 127 so what I'm gonna do here is I am going to go and zoom in down here and I'm gonna find that first downbeat and most people like to put it on the kick to be honest you see the start marker here I'm gonna move that's what's known as a start marker up here this is the loop where the loop will start okay if you hover over this line you can zoom in Okay, and get it as close as you can to that first one. And let's see if that's a downbeat, right? Let's play it. Let's turn it on. Three, uh, two. So yeah, that's the downbeat. So that is the one, okay? So I'm going to right click on this here, okay? And I'm going to set that to be my white one, bar one, beat one, okay? And you see how I did that? I just right click on that start marker, okay? And zoom in. Don't be able to just blow it up. You know, you have to really get in there to see it. Okay, you see I'm a little bit right on it, so I'll probably move it even just a little bit back. Okay, right click on it and set that to be your first bar. Look what it does. It turns on the warp marker for you and it's going to set it up to be this tempo. Okay, since I already know what the tempo of the track is, to be quite honest with you, you see, and I would get rid of that second marker. I don't want no second markers. So if you go set one one here and then you can go warp from here at straight okay but we're not going to do that right now the first thing we do is get rid of that second marker get rid of it and double click on it to get rid of it any markers you add you double click on them okay blow it up double click get rid of them double click get rid of them and those markers are known as warp markers and what they do is they allow for the track to expand and to compress making it faster or slower depending on what tempo of the track so I know that the original track of this song is 126, right? And it's telling me right here that it's 125. I'm gonna just take it right here and I'm gonna look at my kicks, okay? Here's my other kick, that's a kick right there. So I would add a marker there, move it over, okay? And now I have a set marker there and it set that to 126, okay? So that is correct, okay? So now I would take a look at every eight bar, right? So you see that? Let's look at bar nine. We can see that that is correct. You see that little small one? That's the one that Ableton analyzes. I don't need to put one there. It's right on time. Okay. Then I'll just start looking throughout the tracks at the main beats. Bar 17. Let's take a look at that. It's right on that beat. So I know that that is good. I look throughout my whole track. Here's another one, 33, right? So let's make this smaller. Okay. And let's go to bar 33. Move it over. Okay. That all looks good. You see the main drop is at 49, same deal. That also looks good. I don't need to add a warp marker. The more warp markers that you add, the more crazy that it can get for you, okay? Because then it starts to sound warbly, kind of funky. So when you get a track and you have to take a track, let's say for example, the track is at 126 and you bring that track up to like 140 it's, and it's, it's not warped correctly, it's gonna sound funky. So be um, conscious of that. And I will also go to, you know, the, the main drops, 170, what is this, 129, you see that? That also looks good, you see that? That's the one that Ableton analyzed once it recognized what the correct tempo was. We'll go here at 161, and that also looks good. Those are known as main beats. In other words, that kick is going to be right on that. So that's fantastic, right? Cool, let's see, someone has a question. Um, it's actually better to do it, um, for me personally, I'm very detailed when I warp. So I'm not a big fan of adding, um, of checking it every eight bars. It just seems too cumbersome. You know, I like to check the big breaks, you know, like for example, here, I can see that that's a big break and it's lining up correctly and I blow it up, zoom in, make sure that it lines up correctly. So that looks good. 
Okay, and you can always, if you if you make it smaller, you can see where things will get funny. If this was off, you'll see it, that it won't be right on it. So blow it up, you know. That's the best way. Visually look at it when it's smaller, then blow it up and take a look at it. Okay, cool. So once that is done, what I like to always do after that's done, we turn on the click then. And I'm going to lower the click because I think the click was too loud. Kind of, kind of things were a little weird when I started. But it can't be a Planet 1WP show. We don't have weird shit happen. So I'm going to play it, and you can see that it's on time. And I'm just going to skim through it, okay? So we don't have to listen through it. You guys can see that it lines up correctly. I'm going to skim through here as well. So that's how we want to warp tracks, okay? And by the way, I brought this track into the arrangement. I can simply hit Command-C and copy this track and drop it onto a clip here and then grab another track and I can DJ that way, okay? If I turn on my decks down here, my DJ index, I can assign one to A and one to B and here's my crossfader. I will mix one song on this side, then cross it over to the other side, okay? Food for thought, or, or is it food for thought or thought for food? One of those two. Cool, so um, that is how we warp long songs, okay? Now what I wanna talk about is the different options that we have down here, okay? This is warping, that's the tempo, and then we have beats. You know, if you had a simple beat like kick drums and a couple of percussions, that's a good algorithm to have it on, so it helps Ableton analyze it faster and in, in, in a pretty solid way. And those are good for short again, short things. Tones, if you bring it in like a pad or something like that, that you want it to warp. In other words, it's like a eighth bar pad or something and you want it to warp nicely. Um, that's a good algorithm to use. And textures is the same. Repitching um, is an interesting one, right? So that is like if you bring a song and you speed it up and you slow it down and you want the pitch to change along with you speeding it up and slowing it down, then you will select repitch. So if I make the track faster, it's gonna change the pitch. Complex is sort of what we're using right here, okay? And that is when you have whole songs. Like for example, this has drums in it, it has bass, it has piano, it has vocals. So a complex algorithm is better because it gives Ableton the chance to really analyze that track in better detail. And then you have what is known as Complex Pro, and Complex Pro is complex but on steroids because it lets you change the format of the track, which is also sort of like the timbre of it, okay? And those you guys can experiment on your own time, by the way. Um, so if you play it, we will hear and we will play it and change it you will hear it depending on what your envelope is on it you know, so I would recommend you guys to do to um, play around with that on your own time cool so those are algorithms that you should pay attention to when you're warping so in other words you, you bring something in and it sounds funny you're like it doesn't work like I saw the video on YouTube or what the, the hell is well change your algorithms Select one that works for the material that you have. So if you have a song, select complex or complex flow. If you have like a simple beat, put it on beats. Again, if you have like tones or any pads or things like that, tones and textures are good. And repitching are good for effects and things like that. Okay, or changing the tempo of the track and having the pitch change as well. Cool. So now let's move on to other things that we can do with warping, right? Okay, so I'm gonna close that. And for this example, we're just gonna use a simple beat. Okay, so here we have this one, right? I'm gonna double click, I'm gonna make it bigger so we can see it. I'm gonna double click on it so we can see it down here. And look, since it's a small sample, it already warped it for us. We don't have to do the work, okay, which is great. So now I wanna take this loop, uh, this clip, and I wanna loop it up to bar five, all right? I'm gonna turn on my loop and turn it on up here. And the reason why I can loop it pull it and loop it, it's because I had loop on. You see this here? If I didn't have that on, you see that? It would go away. So I'm gonna give you little tidbits as we go along, okay? I'm gonna stretch it out, okay? So now here we have this, uh, it's a two bar loop, right? And we wanna make that voice quiet. We don't want that little vocal in there. See that? 
And it's that first one, right? In this case, we're going to go down here to the right and we're going to open up envelopes, okay? And this is known as a clip. We're going to put it on clip right here, okay? I'm going to zoom into the very ending here. And I know that that's one of those vocal parts. And look what I'm going to do. I'm going to click right here and I'm going to drag across until it turns blue. That means that I've selected that section. Now what I'm going to do with that section is I'm going to hover over it. I'm not doing anything else. My hands are right here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, and the line is dark blue, and I'm going to pull it down. That means that I am bringing the volume of it down. Whoops, I see I made it lopsided. Don't be afraid to move stuff when you mess it up. You see that? Once you do it, deselect it, and now you can move any of the dots by themselves. See this one? I messed that one up. So I'm going to move this dot over here, and I'm going to move that dot over. Okay. So now, as you can see, that it's using an envelope, which is automation, basically, on the clip, to lower the volume when it plays that section, right? So let's listen to it. You see that? It's quiet. That first one is quiet. And then it has another one. You see that dip? I don't like things like that. I'm very anal, but everyone has their own workflow, okay? I'm going to play it again. And I can see that this is another one. Again, I'm going to click, scroll across until it turns blue. Okay, and if I want to fine tune it, if I hold the modifier key command, I can actually slide it over. And now I can hover over to enter now blue, pull it down. Okay, and I've also made that qu part quiet. So let's see. There's another one somewhere around here. Let's find out. Okay, so let's see. Let's see for two bars what we have here. Okay, I'm just going to loop it two bars. You see here, I'm going to set my bar for, for uh, instead of two to one bar. So now when I pull it, it just loops that bar to make uh, this example faster for online purposes. This is another one. We got to get rid of this one. I think it's actually this one. So that's how we can quiet. And you still have a little bit of that vocal in there because it does have a delay, right? So what we can do with that, right? Let's do something different, right? Instead of keeping the taking the vocal out, let's take the, the clap out. So I'm gonna hit option, I'm gonna copy that clip over. Maybe on that section, I'll do the reverse, and on this one, we'll do the opposite, right? So I'm gonna get rid of all of them. I simply click here, scroll across, and hit delete. And I'm gonna do that again for you can see how you can get rid of them. There's a couple of ways. You can click here, scroll across and hit delete okay or you can also right click on here and it'll tell you to clear all envelopes and it'll get rid of them see that so there's multiple ways of doing things okay this one is that why don't we get rid of i think let's get rid of the snares right maybe we just like the vocals so i'm going to again blow it up okay and i'm just going to take the snare probably just a loop the other one has like echoes, so it's hard for you guys to really hear that happening. And let's have a listen. And let's get rid of uh, this one as well. Okay, let's blow it up. And we'll do that. And we'll, whoops, see that? Okay, let's scroll across. Now we're into interns blue, dark blue. You guys probably can't see it on online. I'm not sure if you can, but I hope you can. Okay. See, there's a little one there. Let's get rid of that last one there, right? Yeah, let's get rid of all of them and just keep the vocal. Yeah, it's that last one there. All right. And I'm going to go here again. Click and scroll. Over it turns blue, pull it down, and now it's quiet. Now let's play it. There's no clap there. And it allows me to simply go in there and grab another loop to play with that one. So that one is playing, and I can audition other stuff. See? Now I can start remixing this on my own. Grab that one there, bring it in. And it's already looping for two bars. See that? You 
start creating your own stuff. Another thing that you can do, right? I'm going to mute that one I just put in, right? Okay, and let's go back to that one where we use the envelopes, right? To kind of make our own beat out of there. Okay, and this one was the first one we tried where we took the vocal out instead of the clap. And it sounded kind of weird because it had delays and stuff. So it probably wasn't the best loop to use. But I'm going to take this one here. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to hit Command D to duplicate it. It drops it over. And what we're going to do on this one is we're going to transpose it. Okay. Um, so it'll also sound different. Okay. And we can do it here. But I'm going to tell you what's a cool thing that you can do, right? We're transposing just one cent. Imagine you have that, you know, how sometimes you hear a beat where the snare starts to come down and pitch and you wonder how they did that. Well, we're going to do it just with this vocal right here, okay? With this beat right here. And for this example, why don't we do this? Why don't we take that one and make it four bars long? Okay, right now it's only one bar, okay? So here's another trick that you can do with a book, with a sample if you want to be able to make changes for it instead of it for one loop because whatever you do in one bar is going to happen to all these because we're repeating that one bar over and over. But we don't want to do that. We want to take that one bar that we've made four bars here and make it a real four bar audio sample. So we've already extended it. Now I'm going to click on it and I'm going to use the co shortcut command J. Okay. But if you were doing it the long way, you would use the menu edit and go to consolidate. See the shortcut command J. Okay. And it's going to make that a whole new audio sample for us. That will be four bars long. And you guys can see that. What does that allow me to do? Well, the edit that I did, remember that I took out the clap, it's gone. You see that? But, but, but. It's a whole new sample, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to make that sample go down in pitch. When it starts just to go down, 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 down in pitch, right? I'm going to use the envelope, okay? It's a clip, right? So it's on clip. And instead of using volume, I'm going to use transpose, okay? And I want to transpose the whole thing. I'm going to highlight it and scroll across for the four bars, okay? Actually... I want it to come down from here instead. So let's not do that. Let's take it down here at the end. And I'm going to pull it down, right? I'm going to actually, no, actually the first way was the best way. Command day to select, I mean, click and scroll across to select everybody. And if you move the line a little bit, it gives you the two points. You don't have to do it manually. Click outside to deselect it. And now you have the two points. Your life is easier. We're about doing easy stuff today. Okay, look, and I'm bringing it down 12, 7. Okay, let's bring it down one whole octave. Down 12 steps is an octave down. Okay, and we want it to start at the beginning, at bar, at the original one, which is at zero. And slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly, it's going to go down one bar. Let's listen. I mean, one uh, octave. But, but. Merry Christmas to you as well. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the tutorials. I'm having fun doing them actually. So this is a cool way for you to take an audio sample, bring down the octaves all the way, all the way down. And imagine you're doing what a, that with a snare roll. Same deal. Take a snare roll, program it to go 16 bars up to here, and then start to Take an envelope and transpose it so it starts to go down. Imagine taking a whole track and using that effect and creating a tape, tape stop. That's exactly how you can do it as well. Okay, so I'm just going to review the steps that I went over with you guys because it started a little bit sketchy on my end. But um, if you guys look at every one of my videos, you guys will see that I start really sketchy okay but that's just probably the way that i work i am unorthodox that way but in any case the way that we started today review we wanted to bring in a song into ableton to warp it 
Okay, we didn't know what the tempo of the song was. Oh, I'm sorry, I, what I didn't mention was that now we can speed up and slow it down once it's warped. And you guys can see that it's slowing down and speeding up. And that's what we also did when we warped the very long uh, song that we did at the beginning. And that one was it. And you can see that it'll be in time. And that's how the hell we do remixes. Okay, cool. So um, let's bring it back down to comfortable house tempo or techno. Cool. So yeah, let's review. The first thing I did was I wanted to warp a long song so I can bring it into Ableton and be able to take parts from it or be able to remix it or just do anything I wanted to do with the sample. I didn't know the tempo. I didn't know how to do that. Maybe I wanted to use the tracks for DJing. Cool. So um, the first thing I recommended was this program. I'm not sponsored by them. I just like them. I think they, they got it right. It's called Mix and Key, and if you drop any track from anywhere onto it, it will give you the tempo of it and the key of the song, which is pretty cool because it gives you a head start. What does that mean? That you can type in the tempo of the song if you know it. 126, fantastic. There we go. Okay. The next thing I did was, since we were going to bring the track into Ableton, I didn't want Ableton to automatically warp my long songs because that's the default. I don't want the default. So I went into preferences by using the shortcut command comma. I went into the warping thing, a tab, and I said, do not warp, auto warp those samples for me. I turned it off, okay? That way when I brought in the song, okay, and I'll bring it in again so you guys can see. I'll bring in a different version of it, okay? When I brought it in and I dropped it on bar one, you see, it doesn't turn on auto warp. It doesn't warp it. It's waiting for me to tell it when to do it. So that's the first thing, uh, the, uh, the third thing I did. The next thing I wanted to do was kind of tap the tempo out since I didn't know the tempo of this track, okay? So I played the track and I started to tap the tempo. To make my life easier, I actually mapped this button here to my T on my typing keyboard by hitting key here hitting tap, and then hitting the letter T on my typing keyboard, okay? That way, when I hit the T on my keyboard, it will change the tempo for me according to uh, what the song is playing. And I got an average like about 125 or 126. I actually started to have problems, right? So I said, scrap that, that's not looking too well for me, but I had an idea that it was around 125, 127. I played it from where I had it on my iTunes and I tapped it and it gave me an average again of 125, 127. So I felt comfortable with that. Okay, so what does that mean? I set my tempo here to about 126, 127. Then I went into, the, I double clicked on the clip so it could open up the clip detail view down here. I went into the sample tab, okay, and I started to blow this up all the way so I can see what my first one would be. See that? I'm not afraid. And then I want to change the start marker to start there, okay? Because the start marker, look where it is. It's over here. That's not where the song starts. I need it to start where it starts. Blow it up, blow it up, blow it up. I'm going to use the shortcut on my end, command, and I'm going to click there, and it just brings it, the start marker there. It's just shortcuts, okay? The shortcut for that is command, and click right there on top of this section. Okay, and now I can make everybody's, and then what I do again, I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna say set one one here, which means please make sure that this track where it starts, it's bar one. That's all you're telling it right here. Okay, there you go. So it's set to one one, it gave me the temple of 126. I feel pretty good about that, to be quite honest with you. I'm gonna, because I did it before, so I'm kind of cheating, but I'm confident that when you do it, you will also see that um, these techniques will help you, you just have to practice them, okay? And then I started to look throughout the track where things were breaking down, okay? So we see here 49, I start to look, and I make sure that my downbeat or my kick starts correctly, right? So I'll play it from here with the click. So 
So that looked good, okay? And I did it again where I saw another drop, right? As well. Okay, so that was good. And I went all the way to the end, okay? And you guys can see that it's in time. I would advise you, if you're gonna do this to DJ, I would advise you to definitely listen throughout your whole track and make sure you you're are on time. You don't wanna go DJ, and because you didn't warp your song correctly, it's a disaster, okay? So um, once that was done, I was pretty confident. Then we talked a little bit about the algorithms here. Remember, beats are for something smaller, like what I was doing earlier. Complex are for full songs, you know? And Complex Pro, think about Complex Pro, as complex on steroids because it allows you to change more than um, transposing pitch. It allows you to change the format, which is sort of like the timbre of the voice, okay? And then we have the in-betweens. If you wanted to change the pitch when you speed up the track or you slow it down, you put it on re-pitch, which um, allows you to do that. So once that was done, I was pretty cool. So now what does that allow me to do? It allows me to change the tempo of the song to... Um, whatever temple I want, remix it, learn from it, um, whatever I want to do. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to extend this out. And let's actually go here. We could do like a reggae mix of this. I have to. Cool. So that is uh, ways that you can warp long songs for DJing or for remixes for anything like that. So that's one of the things we covered. The other thing we covered, okay, and I'm going to, that one is much faster. We simply grabbed the loop and we wanted to take that loop and make it our own, right? Because we want to use samples. Let's be real. You could take samples and make them your own. So what I did in this case was I dragged this sample in here, this clip, right? And I wanted to get rid of, let's solo that clip. On that one, I got rid of the original. Okay, let's go to the original actually. And let's go to volume here. Okay, cool. And if you guys can see here, I'm gonna clear the envelope of it. The original is this. I wanted to get rid of that clap, you know, just because for this example, it would be better. What I did was down here on the right, I opened up the envelope. Since this is a clip, I made sure that this was on clip and volume allows me to lower the volume all the way down on those snares. Okay, so what do I do? I listen to it and I can see that that's a snare. Okay, I make it a little bit bigger so I can click, hold and drag hover over the line, I let go now, and to turn it dark blue, pull it down, okay? And it lowers the volume, <clears throat> sorry, of that. And you can see, start to get familiar with things. Here goes another one, and I'm gonna take that one, click and drag like I did the first one, let go, hover over the line, whoops, and I messed that up. Let's do that one again, click and drag, hover over the line, and drag down, okay? And now I'm gonna make everybody smaller. And I think that's another one here. I think that might be a leftover one. Let's bring it down as well. Let's highlight it and see. And let's have a listen. Yeah, that is an extra one. See that? Same thing. Blow it up, blow it up, click, drag across, hover, let it go, hover over it, drag down. And there you go. From that loop, you grab what you wanted. Okay, and if you wanted to get rid of that, you was like, you know what, I did all that and I really hate it. Okay, let's but, listen to it one more time. But, so you but, guys can see that. But, 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 okay, if you did not like that, then you can right click down here and clear all envelopes. If you wanted to get rid of just one, highlight the one you wanna get rid of and hit delete and it will just get rid of one. Okay, so that is one way that you can take a loop and kind of uh, automate the pieces out, okay? 
So you can use it over and over. You can also later on, I'll cover how to bring it into a sampler, chop it up into pieces and work that way. But for now, this is just fast stuff that you can do. You, you might like loop and you're like, I can't use it because you know, it'll be sampling rice. But no, there are, this is how we do. We take, we cycle, and we create our own versions of it, you know. So that is one way to use the envelopes, right, to uh, change the sample. Another way is to, instead of using the volume, we can use transposition, okay. And in that case, I took, for example, this sample right here that we have. The length of it is one bar, and we're just looping it, right. So this is the original sample, Okay, and I'm gonna close this so you guys can get familiar for that, right? Okay, it's just one sample, look. One bar, I mean. And if I wanted to extend it, right, because I have looping on, I can pull it at the end and drag it. And you can, guys can see that it has this dimple here in between, you see that? That dimple represents that it's one bar long and it's being looped over and over. Okay, look, because this is on. If this was off, I wouldn't be able to loop it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. It's two bars long, by the way, and I'm going to, sorry, it's one bar long. There you go. It's, if I try to pull it, look, it, it will not let me because I can't loop it. The original loop is actually two bars, but this, I'm only using one bar of it for this example. Okay, but it won't let me loop. You see that? Now, if I turn on looping, it will allow me to loop it. Okay. The reason why I used one bar was because I only worked on one bar of the loop. That's why. So we'll keep it for one bar. Okay, and now we extend it. And if we wanted to make that into a four bar loop, we can use this clip up here that's called consolidate, right? Which takes this whole loop that we've looped and makes it into one whole four bar audio file or audio clip, a whole new one. And that's what I wanna do, you know, cause I've already done my volume, things that I want on it. You know, it looks good, that's what I wanted. I'm pretty happy with that. I just wanna now change transposition for four bars. I could actually extend it and make it eight bars. Let's make it eight bars, why don't we do that? Okay, and let's make a whole new file. Since it's looping over and over, what does that mean? That anything I do in this one bar will repeat over and over and that's not what I want. I want to transfer for eight bars. So I have to make this a new audio file. Okay, edit, consolidate, or shortcut command J. And it's gonna make a whole new file for me. You see that? All my edits are there. And now I'm gonna click on, I'm on the clip already, right? And this time around, I'm gonna transpose it. Okay, you can start right here by clicking here and then clicking down here and then pulling the line down. You see that? Minus 12 step is one octave down. This is starting at zero and it's gonna start to go down the octave. So let's play it. If you crazy with it, right? Let's do something right here. Let's see. This weird stuff that you can do. So that's it guys. Uh, just a basic way that you can warp long samples, the different algorithms, small samples, and kind of use envelopes to take away parts that you don't like to create transposition. And maybe next one I'll do how to actually bring it into the slicer and take the kicks and the snares and the hi-hats and kind of start to create your own library of sounds. But, um, I don't know, I, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'm wishing every each and one of you a fantastic uh, holiday. Enjoy your Christmas with your family and a happy new year. I don't know if I will be broadcasting next week. 
But however, I wish all of you a happy, fantastic holiday time with your family. And thank you for watching Planet One WP. My name is Josie Carr. Ciao. Bye.